It is possible to store a sequence of SQL statements and have them all execute with a single command. Now this is not an alternative form of transaction processing. This is simply a technique that you can use to issue a number of SQL statements with a single execute command. This program creates the same animal table we've been using, then uses two distinct batch processes to populate the table. This method creates the table. Nothing new here. A statement object is created and used to execute the SQL statement that creates the table. It has the same layout we've been using. A batch process is used to add four items to the database. A simple statement object is created, then the method addBatch is called four times with four individual SQL insert statements. The SQL statements don't all have to be the same as they are here, they can be entirely different commands. They're all stored inside the statement object, but nothing else is done. This call to execute batch executes all of the SQL statements in the order in which they were added to the statement object. Now this has the same result as you would get calling the execute method for each statement. The return value from the execute batch is an array of int values indicating the result of executing each of the commands. If you want to check for success or failure or whatever, you will need to check the individual int values in that array. If a number is zero or greater, the execution was a success. If it is greater than zero, it's a count of the number of rows that were updated. There are some named constants in the statement class that can be returned also. If the value returned is success no info, then the execution was a success, but there's no information on how many rows, if any, were affected. The return value of execute failed indicates that the command did not succeed for some reason. Now, this is something else that may not work for you. The JDBC driver is not required to implement this batch processing, and those that do implement it may do it in different ways. For example, if one of the statements in the middle were to fail, the batch process would continue on with the other statements, or it may just abandon everything and ignore the rest of the statements in the batch. Before you use this extensively in your code, check out its behavior with your database. And if you do use it, you should be aware that your code will not be portable to some other databases. The prepared statement class is a subclass of the statement class, so it can be batched also. Here you can see a prepared statement being created with a parameter position for the names and the number of the legs of animals. Then it's a matter of setting the values of each parameter and calling add batch for each new command. Now notice that the leg count for the T-Rex is not set. That's because the value was set to 4 in the previous command and it doesn't change unless you change it yourself. Once again, once you've got all the commands added, a call to execute batch executes all the statements in the order in which they were added to the prepared statement. Running the program creates the table. Remember, the example program named Dump Animal Table from the previous movie is used to list all the data in the animal table, then drops the table from the database. This shows that the table was created and the information from the two batch processes was added to the table. Then this program dropped the table.